Good afternoon. Welcome, everyone, to the sixth annual Innovation Awards. I'm Dave Hodgins, Executive Director of the LA Better Buildings Challenge, and I look forward to this event every year, seeing familiar faces, meeting new people, seeing smiles on the faces of the winners and finalists, and feeling the energy in the room. Pardon the pun. So while I'm excited to share these inspiring projects with all of you, I have to say it's bittersweet to be doing this event online. At least we're doing it, but speaking to you from my home office while my kids are napping is no substitute for in person. I know many of you are also working from home, taking care of kids, parents, grandparents, just trying to focus and figure out what's next between all these Zoom meetings. And how do we keep our sustainability programs on track? Efficiency has always been hard, now it's harder. But necessity is the mother of invention, as they say. We've dealt with challenges before, and I'm confident that we can innovate our way through this. I'd like to thank our sponsors, the LA Department of Water and Power and SoCal Gas for their continued support. We appreciate your partnership, as always. So let's get into it. We received a record number of submissions this year, so we had a really tough job narrowing down the field. I'll share a few highlights on each project, but I can't possibly do them justice in the time we have. So for those of you who want to dive deeper, we'll be publishing case studies on all these projects on our website very soon. We have five categories this year, energy performance, water performance, affordable multifamily residential, which is new this year, portfolio of the year, and walk the walk, which acknowledges public buildings. We like to keep the number of categories small, so we see diversity within each one in terms of property type, size, ownership, but we thought it made sense to break out affordable multifamily this year, not only because we received such great entries, but because housing affordability is such a critical issue in LA, even more so these days. The judges considered a bunch of different criteria as they evaluated these projects. Hard numbers are important, we look at the past year's savings and also consider reductions since taking ownership to give a more complete picture. But qualitative factors are also important, like alignment with an organization-wide commitment, market context, meaning how do these projects stand out amongst their peers, amongst their comp set, stakeholder engagement, both internal and external, that looks different depending on the type of asset, whether that's multifamily, hospitality, commercial, retail and innovation writ large. When we talk about innovation, most of us think about technology or some other kind of scientific breakthrough. Technology is definitely part of it, but it's people who innovate. So when we talk about innovation here, we're talking about organizational commitment. We're talking about stakeholder engagement. We're talking about collaboration. We're talking about project execution, thinking outside the box, redefining what's possible, than doing it. Before we get into the program, I want to give a special thank you to our judges and collaborating organizations. Together, your organizations represent LA's best thinking in the green building space. Each of you are leaders in your fields, and it's your diverse perspectives, your expertise, that make these awards meaningful and unique. So enough from me. I'd like to hand over the microphone to my friend and colleague, Lauren Faber O'Connor, Chief Sustainability Officer for the City of LA to provide a few remarks. Lauren. Thanks so much, Dave, and greetings to all of you in the audience today. I'm Lauren Faber O'Connor, Chief Sustainability Officer for the City of Los Angeles, and I'm thrilled to join you again this year to celebrate some of the best buildings and companies in LA that are delivering energy and water savings and impressive innovation. So first, I want to thank the winners that are going to be recognized today. You are truly exemplars for our city. And LA has once again been given the title of number one city for Energy Star Buildings. So great job to everyone because credit is due all around. I'd also like to recognize the addition of affordable multifamily housing as a category in this year's awards. Really, thank you to LABBC for bringing attention to this important part of our economy and building sector. It's a major priority, and now more than ever, we are recognizing the importance of serving this population. This population is made up of our essential workforce who are out on the front lines of this COVID-19 pandemic, making sure our basic needs and services can be met. So we have to put in the work as well to make sure their lives are better, helping them find cost savings wherever we can. 
Now, I want to take a moment to highlight some of the critical uh, programs and actions that the mayor is undertaking to beat COVID-19. Since March 20th, Angelinos have been staying safer at home, practicing safe physical distancing as we preserve essential services within our city. Construction is an essential service, so our job sites remain open, and the Department of Building and Safety has developed and provided guidance on protocols for staying safe in our job sites, and these protocols are being enforced. Inspectors are out visiting sites, and those that are not in compliance will be shut down. At the same time, we've dramatically expanded our COVID-19 testing capability. This is a medical service that the city would not normally have a role in. But even in this short period of time, we are now at a point where anyone in the county with symptoms can get a same day or next day appointment. One of the first acts the mayor undertook when this crisis was becoming clear and clear on our doorstep was placing a moratorium on residential and commercial evictions and water and power shutoffs, as well as a halt to rent increases on rent-stabilized housing. We have expanded paid sick leave for many eligible Angelinos, instituted special protections for our essential workers, and have stood up multiple shelters for our homeless neighbors and child care centers for essential workers. We've also connected our workers and everyday citizens with personal protective face coverings through a program called LA Protects. It's a new partnership that we've organized with the city's fashion and garment industry to make protective gear and other medical supplies for frontline workers, which can help our businesses that might otherwise have to close stay operating. We're also looking at these types of strategies when it comes to addressing food insecurity and working with local meal providers and restaurants as well, who are extraordinarily hard hit by this crisis. Finally, we've partnered with the with LA County to form the LA Cares Corps, providing small businesses with assistance in applying for federal loans that can help them survive the COVID-19 crisis. This is a program that we hope to expand to address a number of critical needs in responding to the pandemic. Now, with all that said, this immediate crisis does not deter us from our long-term goals. Our ability to recover from this crisis and become a more resilient community depends on if we build back better than we were before. And that's our goal. How to ensure that the new normal for LA is better than it was before, better for our public health, better for low-income communities, better for our economy, and better for the climate. We're learning a lesson in real time that the earth can heal. It can regenerate. LA's air right now is some of the cleanest in the world. However, the take-home message cannot be that we have to stop our lives in their tracks in order to reach this goal. But instead, as we recover, we know that the benefits of transitioning to a carbon-neutral world can be realized, and they are real. Now, the city is always looking for opportunities to lead by example. That's something we have in common with all of you here at LABBC. In February, the mayor released Executive Directive 25, which has many notable actions that city government is taking to lead by example. On the building side, we will design all of our new buildings and major renovations to be carbon neutral, and we've adopted the state's Buy Clean California Act, which reduces embodied carbon in common construction materials. Buildings account for around 41% of emissions citywide, so your efforts to optimize your buildings have a direct impact on LA meeting and exceeding the goals set forth in the Paris Climate Agreement. So I implore your companies to consider adopting the goals in our Executive Directive 25 so that you too can lead by example. In fact, by being a part of LABBC, you are seeing firsthand the benefits of transitioning to clean and healthy buildings. I hope you continue down this road and I hope you promote this work with your peers. We will certainly work with you to do that as well. Not to mention that the literal work that has to be done to transition to clean and healthy buildings creates jobs. 
something badly needed as our economy starts to reopen in the coming weeks and months. So let's not be deterred. Let's put people back to work greening our buildings. And Dave asked me to give you a bit of an update on LA's existing buildings, energy and water efficiency ordinance, or LA's EBEWI. Our first priority is the health and safety of our population. And so we realize that adhering to business as usual right now just isn't possible for a lot of Angelinos as they deal with the urgent issues associated with the COVID-19 pandemic. So to give relief to local building owners and managers, The city has suspended the deadlines for EBEWI for the time being. That means that annual energy and water benchmarking reports, which would normally be due to the city by June 1 of this year, have had their deadlines suspended until further notice. And the same goes for the first round of performance reports or audit and retro commissioning reports, which were due in the January through June 2021 timeframe. And once the local emergency has been lifted by the mayor, the Department of Building and Safety will advise building owners of the revised deadlines. So if you have any questions on that, Dave can certainly get you to the right person either in my office or at the Department of Building and Safety. So I want to conclude by congratulating the winners again on your outstanding achievements and leadership. If the times that we're living in right now are showing us anything. It is that we are in this together and we look forward to collaborating with you and with the LA Better Buildings Challenge in using our buildings as forces for good, forces for recovery and innovation. I hope that everyone who is joining us here today is safe and well as goes for your family and coworkers, thank you for everything you are doing for this city. Whether that means staying safer at home, being directly involved in COVID-19 response, but certainly all your work to be pillars in the sustainability community that is Los Angeles, showing us that the future that we want is here today. And Dave, thank you so much for keeping us together during these challenging times. Um, Really appreciate everything you're doing and over to you. Thank you. Thanks, Lauren. It's going to be tough, but I think we all share your optimism and that's what today is all about. Next, I'd like to introduce David Jaco, Director of Efficiency Solutions at the LA Department of Water and Power. David. Thank you, Dave. Thanks for having me today. Uh, I'm David Jaco, Director of Efficiency Solutions here at LADWP. Uh, We run a a very extensive portfolio of energy efficiency programs to help our customers save energy uh, and money on their bills. One of our guiding principles for what we're trying to accomplish with our programs is to help decarbonize the economy and do it equitably. Those two go hand in hand. Uh, Decarbonization comes from reducing energy use associated with with fossil fuel production, uh, as well as as helping customers reduce their, their overall energy use. And it's very important that we also do this equitably. And what that means is by making sure we serve all of our customers uh, to the maximum extent they can realize their energy efficiency opportunities, as well as help um, um, establish good, clean job opportunities for the local and regional workforce. That's a very important key. As a matter of fact, energy efficiency tends to be more labor intensive than capital intensive. So uh, dollar for dollar compared to other avenues uh, to inject stimulus, as you will, if you will, uh, energy efficiency creates more jobs uh, per dollar invested. So it's a key strategy across uh, all of our commitments, uh, decarbonization, but also better better serving our our city and helping our our customers and the, and the local uh, workforce. And I wanted to take a minute or two to talk about uh, COVID nineteen and and what that has done to our programs. And it's been uh, dramatic and and unfortunately substantial that we have had to, for the most part, suspend all in-person energy efficiency activities on customer sites. And this is an outgrowth of, of Mayor 
Garcetti's uh, emergency pro- proclamation and his directives about what was considered essential and, and non-essential services. So that doesn't mean we shut programs down per se. We still anything we can do in the office, we're doing. We're intaking applications, processing. Uh, we're proceeding to to review, uh, do ana- analysis. We're piloting. Uh, well, actually, we've actually launched virtual inspections. So when we're closing out a project, getting getting close to paying the, the rebate or the incentive, uh, typically we would do a sample of of some subset of of. Uh, in on-site inspections to verify the equipment. We have virtual inspection technology now where we can work with the customer um, and have the customer walk around and, and, and help us check the boxes on the, the equipment that was to be installed per the project. So we're doing that, and that's helping continue to move projects forward and get rebates out the door. Uh, and this is all in line with our uh, you know, continued priority on sustainability and energy efficiency for our customers. Uh, in you know, in a time like this, there's there's things that are near term efforts. There's mid term and there's long term. Uh, in the mid and long term, we're absolutely laser focused on continuing the march towards full decarbonization of of, a, of our grid and uh, and our customers, as well as massive energy efficiency. In the very very short term, uh, we're keeping as much going as we can through through the virtual audits and the continued analysis and planning and and technical support that we're able to provide. Granted, because of of COVID, things are moving a bit slower. There's there's a lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, competing competing things for attention in that space right now, as everybody here is, is well aware. Uh, social distancing and being safe is utmost importance for for us, our customers, and our employees. So everything we do has to has to uh, be safe. Bottom line. So we're tracking the mayor's pronouncements very closely. Uh, I anticipate things will start moving back towards normal once the mayor has decided to to lift the emergency order and whatever phasing he uh, decides on that will certainly be following that. Now, that said, we don't view this as simply getting back to business as usual. Uh, The COVID-19 crisis not just as a health impact, but also as an economic impact is is profound. The mayor uh, just uh, recently gave gave uh, a sobering picture of of you know how impactful covid nineteen is going to be from an economic standpoint. So we're in the midst of also planning our response and how we're going to support the recovery once the crisis passes and we can be back to full speed on on all of our programs. So to preview that, we're working on uh, a few few initiatives that will expand upon what we've already been doing and allow us to help our customers even more once we're able to get back to back to full strength. Uh, One is uh, we've joined in a partnership with the Southern California Gas Company uh, to help Help with uh, help uh, multifamily projects complete comprehensive whole building retrofits, and so that includes not just lighting but uh, air conditioning systems, uh, hot water systems, in unit, as well as as uh, general area upgrades, uh, envelope meaning insulation, windows perhaps can be can be part of those projects. So that's already in place. We actually just launched that earlier this year. And so, or I'm sorry, late last year, in late 2019. And so we're building up a robust pipeline of projects there. We've already got about 102 projects, 122 projects in the pipeline, and another 10 or so have, have already completed. So those are long range projects, Takes can take a year or two for those to gestate and get installed, but uh, it's moving. And we're going a step beyond that now and uh, joining the low-income weatherization program, which is a statewide program administered by California. And this will be specifically targeting um, very deep retrofits into low-income multifamily, hence the name low-income weatherization program, uh, in partnership with the state who uh, gets funding periodically for this, but also providing our funding, we'll be able to really target uh, the most most needy, disadvantaged, low-income uh, multifamily properties, both the, um, the ones that are held by large affordable housing developers, the portfolio, as well as smaller ones, I mean, more in the, what we would call the, the mom, mom 
and pop category of, of low-income housing landlords and property managers. We anticipate that to be a major effort uh, once that program is in place and launched and pretty much a, uh, a scalable, large, comprehensive uh, pathway to serve hopefully thousands of multifamily units uh, per year, uh, tens of thousands ideally once we ramp up. So we're really excited about that. That's coming later this summer, early fall. And uh, that's going to really help in terms of those customers getting them back on their feet by reducing their bills, helping those those uh, property managers who may have lost some rental income in the time in that time period, and of course the uh, assisting with job creation for the, the local contractors that'll be doing doing that work. So uh, to conclude, I want to thank everybody uh, for for joining. I want to thank all the uh, all the uh, folks that submitted applications or, or nominations for awards, and I congratulate the winners, and thank you very much. With that, I will hand it back to Dave Hodgins. Thank you. Thank you, David. It's exciting to hear about the changes you're making at the department and the new programs you're bringing online. We'll see some examples of the type of deep projects that can get done through those programs later on in the program. I'd now like to hand it over to Jeff Walker with SoCal Gas to share a few remarks before we get into the rest of the program. Jeff. Thank you, Dave, for giving me the opportunity to join this prestigious event, and congratulations to you for hosting it for the sixth consecutive year. I'm Jeff Walker, Vice President of Customer Solutions for SoCal Gas. The Customer Solutions team is responsible for our energy efficiency programs, clean energy programs development, and providing a host of other energy solutions for our customers. I'd like to start off by acknowledging what a trying time it's been for all of us as we respond to this pandemic and navigate towards a new normal. At SoCal Gas, safety is critically important to us and we've taken numerous measures to protect our workforce and the public. These measures include social distancing and the use of face coverings when safe to do so. We will continue to make essential and emergency service appointments, including reports of suspected natural gas leak, carbon monoxide checks, gas meter turn-ons, natural gas outage, and pilot relights. SoCal Gas also continues to perform work needed to maintain our infrastructure so that we can continue to provide our customers with safe and reliable energy services. Service disconnections have been suspended until further notice this means no residential or small business customer will have their natural gas turned off due to non-payment. For those experiencing financial hardships, including from COVID-19, we offer a 20% discount on natural gas bills for qualifying customers through our CARE program. To date, SoCal Gas has donated a million dollars to nonprofit organizations throughout our service territory to support the region's workforce and feed the hungry. Together, the Semper Energy family of companies have donated more than 7 million to those in need during this crisis. All of us at SoCal Gas and the Semper Energy family of companies want to do everything we can to support our communities during this time, especially the most vulnerable. Now I'd like to congratulate the award nominees and winners. We are strong supporters of achieving the state's clean energy goals and sustainability movement, including energy efficiency efforts, and are happy to see many quality projects being brought forward. Part of the vision that we have is to continue to support our customers as they move forward on their energy efficiency and sustainability journeys. We have a strong partnership with LADWP to provide comprehensive and multi-fuel efficiency solutions for customers in Los Angeles. And in particularly, I wanna thank David and LADWP for our ongoing partnership and for their strong commitment to energy efficiency. SoCal Gas's vision is to be the cleanest gas utility in North America, delivering affordable, reliable, and increasingly renewable energy to our customers. We continue to be a leader in researching and developing new technologies that improve energy efficiency and protect the environment. Over the last five years, our energy efficiency programs delivered more than 204 million therms in energy savings 
enough natural gas usage for 125,000 households a year. And at the same time, we reduce greenhouse gas emissions by over 1 million metric tons, the equivalent of removing more than 230,000 cars from the road annually. These advances have also helped our customers and our communities save nearly $225 million in utility bill costs. So again, I want to thank you, Dave, for this opportunity, and I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, now on to the part we've all been waiting for. Our first category is energy performance. All of this year's finalists are great examples of what we mean by innovation. It's all about commitment, creativity, and collaboration. And the finalists are Kilroy Realty, Westside Media Center. The Kilroy team has put up some big numbers, close to a 46% reduction in energy use since taking ownership, mainly through operational changes like eliminating simultaneous heating and cooling, optimizing set points, changing equipment schedules. And what I think is really cool is how they engaged tenants and got them on board with the changes. That's innovative, and that's the kind of thing we want to highlight. Our second finalist is KPMG Center, owned by LBA Realty. This project involved installation of some advanced automation, but it was the way the chief dialed in that system that's driving the savings. The building has a perfect 100 Energy Star score, and I've actually heard that DWP has sent meter readers out multiple times to check if the meter was even running because the building is so efficient. Our third finalist, Watt Plaza. Extensive retrofits over the years contributed to a 31.5% reduction since taking ownership. They recently earned LEED Platinum certification, and they just continue to find opportunities. Last year, they received a special acknowledgement from DWP for their outstanding participation in the Demand Response Program. Three outstanding finalists, three examples of what a great engineer can do with support for management and ownership. And the winner is Kilroy, Westside Media Center. Congratulations to the Kilroy team. We've asked Sarah Neff, Senior Vice President of Sustainability, to accept the award on behalf of the Kilroy team. Thank you so much, Dave. Um, Kilroy Realty Corporation is honored to receive this award um, for our energy reduction work at Westside Media Center. My name is Sarah Neff. I'm the Senior Vice President of Sustainability for Kilroy Realty Corporation. And we have committed to achieving carbon neutral operations by the end of 2020. And energy efficiency is an important part of achieving those goals. Our hearts go out to all of the families who have been impacted by COVID, and we hope anybody who is uh, attending these awards is staying safe and healthy. We are not going to allow this crisis to derail us from our sustainability goals. We believe that with the increased focus on health in the built environment, there will be an increased focus on all impacts of the built environment, both in environmental matters as well as social. Um, we are really excited to be once again demonstrating that Westside Media Center showing energy reductions. Um, I've been at Kilroy for 10 years, and we have reduced energy use in these assets every single year, um, including an additional 5% um, between 2018 and 2019. And because we would like the um, a lot of our carbon reductions to come from on-site energy efficiency, projects like this one really support those goals. Thank you so much for this award, and back to you, Dave. Thank you, Sarah. Achieving carbon neutrality by the end of 2020 sounds crazy, but you're doing it. Congratulations again to you and your team. Our next category, Affordable Multifamily Project of the Year. These projects are especially complex because they're working in people's homes. And at least for two of them, they were developing these projects in the middle of very complex transactions. Our first finalist is Retirement Housing Foundation's Angeles Plaza. Most of you have probably driven past this project multiple times, maybe every day, and not realized it was one of the largest HUD-assisted properties in the U.S. Through a partnership with SoCal Gas and DWP, they cut energy use 11% since taking ownership, with half of that coming in 2019. Really nice water savings as well. Thousands of seniors live in this facility, so I know it was very challenging to execute. Our next finalist is Jonathan Rose Company's Casa Panorama. Another senior housing project, Casa Panorama, is one of the first high-rise residential properties anywhere to electrify the building's central water heating system with incentives through the low-income weatherization program David alluded to. 
super innovative in terms of technology and execution, and big numbers with a 32% projected reduction in energy use and a 21 point jump on Energy Star. And because the new hot water system actually heats the water faster, they've seen water use go down because people don't have to wait as long for the shower to warm up. Our third finalist in the multifamily category is Florence Avenue Villas, owned by Century Housing. This project also came through LIWIP and is projecting over 50% savings. While the numbers are amazing, what really stands out to me about this project is the way ownership worked with tenants to build support for the project. They faced resistance initially. People were skeptical about the purpose of the work and what would happen to them if they were relocated. So it would have been easy to just reduce the scope, do the minimum, and move on. But they didn't do that. They worked through it and ended up implementing a fantastic comprehensive project. Three very impressive projects, but only one can be the winner. And the winner is Century Housing, Florence Avenue Villas. Oscar Alvarado, VP of Development at Century, has prepared some remarks for us. Oscar? Thank you, Dave. Century Housing is honored to receive this award recognizing our Florence Morehouse project for its significant reduction in energy and water consumption. My name is Oscar Alvarado, and I'm the Vice President of Housing Development for Century Housing. Uh, we always set fairly high standards for ourselves in terms of um, energy use at our buildings. When we do new construction projects, we aim for a lead platinum status every time. Florence Morehouse provided an opportunity um, working with uh, LADCC and the LIWIP program to really figure out what our program was going to be to significantly reduce energy use at our acquisition rehab projects. And we were able to find uh, much success with the help of your teams. Century remains committed to energy savings throughout our portfolio, and we're thankful for being able to use Florence and Morehouse as a sample project to move more towards that. We look forward to working with you and your team again in the future. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Oscar, and congratulations again. Our next category is water performance. LA imports most of its water from hundreds of miles away, literally pumping it over mountains. So moving towards local sources of water, being smart with the water we have, and finding ways to reuse it is super important. Our first finalist is Kaiser Permanente Harbor City Medical Center. This is one of the first deployments of radial ionization technology on cooling towers, and the numbers are big. But what I think is most innovative about this project was the procurement process. They didn't just put out an RFP to replace the existing system like for like. They figured out the results they wanted to achieve, went to the market for solutions, and moved forward with a new technology they hadn't even known existed. That's innovative. Our next finalist is Westfield Century City. Westfield installed a rainwater capture system a few years back, and they've added to that, with a comprehensive groundwater recycling project that's saving an additional 12 million gallons a year of potable water. The technology is not new, but most properties with dewatering issues don't actually use the water for anything. Here, Westfield thought outside the box and found a way to turn a nuisance into an opportunity. Two outstanding finalists, both great examples of what is possible with creativity and innovation. But there can only be one winner, and that winner is... Kaiser Permanente, Harbor City Medical Center. The Kaiser team was not able to provide remarks today since they are 100% focused on the COVID response, as they should be. So on behalf of the LABBC team and everyone here on the line, thank you for what you do. And congratulations on your outstanding sustainability work. Portfolio of the year is about execution at scale, saving energy and water across multiple properties simultaneously in LA, throughout the region, or throughout the country as the case may be. Developing a single project can be difficult, but implementing a coordinated portfolio-wide strategy requires another level of commitment and collaboration. And the finalists are Brookfield Properties, two-time defending portfolio of the year. They're back in the finals again. The biggest landlord in downtown LA, they just keep finding opportunities for savings in their six properties. Over 10% reduction in energy use since taking ownership, 20% on water in buildings that are already super efficient. But what's always impressed me about Brookfield is the way they collaborate, the culture they've built. Every month, they bring together all the chief engineers and they talk. They talk about challenges, solutions, ways to make their buildings better. 
then ownership supports those ideas. Sounds simple, but it's not. It's just awesome collaboration. Our next finalist is Jonathan Rose Companies. Based out of New York City, they're a national developer, owner, and operator of affordable multifamily housing. They recently acquired a portfolio scattered across multiple states, including two properties in LA, and a whole stack of incentive programs came into play to fund deep retrofits across that entire portfolio. In LA, they're showing over 50% energy savings and they've proven it's possible to electrify a large central hot water system. Awesome projects, and they did all of this in the middle of a complicated transaction with other renovations happening at the same time. Wow. Our third finalist is LBA Realty with 257 properties nationwide and two in LA. Their average energy star score here is 94.5 and they've cut energy use 20% since they took over these properties, 4% just last year. LBA is also leading in energy storage, something we need a lot more of, with three systems online in California and two in other markets. Three impressive finalists, the judges had a very tough job, and the winner is Jonathan Rose Companies. Congratulations. Jonathan Rose VP of Sustainability, Lauren Zulo, has prepared some remarks. Lauren. Thank you, Dave. Jonathan Rose Companies is thrilled to be recognized as the LA Better Buildings Challenge Portfolio of the Year. I'm Lauren Zulo, Director of Environmental Impact at Jonathan Rose Companies. We're a nationwide real estate developer and investment firm focused on building and preserving affordable and mixed income housing, greening it, and creating communities of opportunity. Across our portfolio, our goal is to reduce the energy, water, and emissions profile of our properties while enhancing the health of our residents and staff. In LA, we have implemented two comprehensive energy and water saving retrofits that will reduce energy use 30 to 50% through a combination of efficiency, electrification, and solar renewable energy. We partnered with Bright Power as our sustainability consultant and could not have done the work without support from the Low Income Weatherization Program and its administrators, the Association for Energy Affordability, which provided significant funding and technical support as well as incentives from LADWP and SoCal Gas. As we begin a new chapter under the blanket of COVID-19, it is paramount that we do everything we can to reduce air pollution and lower utility costs for our properties and residents to begin to heal the fabric of our communities. LABBC is a leader in transforming the built environment and we are pleased to be part of it. Thank you again for this tremendous honor. Now back to you, Dave. Thank you, Lauren. Amazing work. Congratulations again. Shifting to the public sector, the Walk the Walk Awards go to the public buildings that have achieved the most outstanding energy and water performance. We'll begin with energy. Our first finalist is Cal State Northridge. Parking garage lighting retrofits in 2019 put up some big savings and opened the door for campus-wide lighting upgrades. And all of that builds on a long track record of energy and water efficiency work. Our second finalist is LACCD's LA City College. LACCD partnered with a program called Climate Core to roll out an initiative called Energy Blitz, which engaged over 800 students, faculty, and staff to reduce campus-wide energy consumption almost 12% in 2019, all through awareness and behavior change. And the winner is LA City College. LACCD's Utility Program Manager, Aris Hovasapian, has prepared a few remarks on behalf of the team. Aris? Thank you, Dave. Los Angeles Community College District is honored to receive this award, recognizing the work performed through the Climate Corps Fellowship at LA City College that focused on energy and water conservation through outreach, education, and improved behavior. My name is Aris Hovasapian, and I'm the Utility Program Manager at LACCD, advising and supporting nine colleges on energy and utilities. The district has been an early adopter on sustainability, with over 10 megawatts of solar PV installed at our colleges and having completed over 50 energy efficiency projects in the last few years. We're now working on establishing a long-term goal to achieve zero carbon energy, and we'll be focusing on the planning process for this effort in the next few months. A critical factor in achieving those goals is to find ways to continuously improve the behavior of building occupants, and we were able to demonstrate through this project that outreach and education can make a substantial impact on our overall energy consumption profile. 
The results from this project will feed into the potential energy conservation categories that we focus on as we develop our clean energy targets. I also want to thank our partner firm, Strategic Energy Innovations, for running the Climate Core Fellowship Program, Los Angeles Department of Water and Power for supporting this project through the nonprofit grant program, the Foundation for Los Angeles Community Colleges for their assistance on applying for the grant, and of course, the LA Better Buildings Challenge for their ongoing advocacy and support and for recognizing the work done through this project. Thanks again, Dave. Congratulations, Aris. I'm excited to see this roll out at other campuses. Our next award recognizes public sector water savings. Our first finalist is the City of LA, City Hall East. City Hall East achieved 20% water savings, over a million gallons a year, by installing an electrochemical water treatment system on their cooling towers. The system has also reduced sewer charges by 85% and practically eliminated the need for chemicals, which is a cost savings but also a health and safety benefit for the maintenance team. And aside from the technology itself, what I think is really innovative here is how they're sharing the results. They're offering regular tours, so anyone can go see the system and ask questions, kick the tires, and they worked with NREL to put together a detailed M&V report with all the data. This has already led to installations at SoCal Gas's Energy Resource Center and at DWP's headquarters, and hopefully lots more projects will come from this one. Our next finalist is the Federal Bureau of Prisons Metropolitan Detention Center in downtown. This facility underwent comprehensive upgrades that reduced water use 43% and energy by 30. These numbers are especially impressive when you consider the challenges of maintaining prison operations while the work was going on. And our third finalist in the water category is UCLA, my alma mater. They're a well-known leader in the space, and the team there just continues to innovate and find opportunities. In 2019, they expanded on their condensate capture system, which they expect will save an additional 328,500 kilogallons over 10 years. And the winner is... City Hall East. Alan Pavalella, Operations Manager for the City's Building Maintenance Division, will share a few remarks. Alan. I'd like to first start off by thanking Dave and his staff for putting on this awards uh, ceremony. My company is City of Los Angeles, and it's an honor to receive this award recognizing our work with the Dynamic Water System. Our goal is to reduce energy and water. Uh, my name is Alan Pavalella. I am the Operations Manager of Energy and Water Management Group here at General Services Building Maintenance. Our ongoing goals is to save water and electricity. Due to the COVID-19, some of our impacts we're having is we're having a tough time getting materials such as LED lights, certain air conditioning products built and shipped out to us, along with uh, some of our staff. Um, not being able to work due to their high risk. We also have changed our schedules, which which is hampering things. Some of us are working from home, and it's been a struggle. Um, this project that we did, we saved approximately 20% water savings, which amounts to 1.6 million gallons of water, and we've reduced our sewer costs by 85%. Um, I think this dynamic water system is a real good system that's worked well for the city. Uh, we plan on uh, pushing this project to other of our other large buildings to uh, continue our savings. And once again, I'd like to thank Dave for putting on this uh, event. And I hand it back to you, Dave. Thanks, Alan. I'm personally super excited to see this project complete, and I hope everyone will come check out the tour. With that, I'd like to thank everyone that helped make today's event possible, starting with our collaborating organizations. Thank you for helping to promote the call for projects and bring in so many great submissions, and thank you for serving as judges. As I said, it's your perspective and your expertise that make these awards meaningful and unique. I hope you enjoyed the process as much as I did, and I look forward to next year. I'd also like to recognize our sponsors again, LADWP and SoCal Gas. Thank you again for your continued support. And thank you to the LA BBC team, Renee Daniel, Christiane Schrobelgen, John Perfit, Jeff Gould, Halen Chun, Emily Kulega, Moer Vesnik, Les Rosenberg, and Wayne Aldridge. It's an honor to have the opportunity to work with such a dedicated and talented team, and hundreds of hours of work went into this event. And thank you all for joining us. I hope you come away from today fired up.
We'll be posting case studies on our website very soon, and we'll be announcing a new webinar series focused on ideas to keep sustainability efforts moving in the wake of COVID. Congratulations again to our winners, finalists, and everyone who submitted projects. All of you are showing what's possible when there's commitment, creativity, and collaboration. For now, stay safe. We look forward to seeing all of you in person next year.